All right. Hello, world. Can you hear me OK? Here at Harvard and Cambridge, Massachusetts. So nice to see everyone waving and smiling. Uh, my name is David Malin, and this is CS50 X Puzzle Day 2022's conclusion, wherein we'll walk you through the actual solutions to the problem. We have a tradition in CS50, anytime we gather live via Zoom, of taking a souvenir photo so that we can send out a, a reminder of the day. If you would like to opt into this, turn on your camera now. If you would like to opt out of this, turn off your camera now. Let's give everyone a moment to adjust their Zoom settings. You should also, at the same time, have access to the chat. If you'd like to say hello to everyone in the chat and where in the world you're from, I suspect the chat will be a little noisy during today's walkthroughs, but that seems OK, since the goal is to delight with some excitement, some frustration at whether or not you got each of the puzzles. So we'll leave chat on. Take another moment just for everyone to turn on their cameras if you'd like to opt in. And before we do this too, we're going to try one other new thing. This might break Zoom, but in a moment, you're going to be prompted to unmute yourself. Hello, 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 smile and a wave to wave at everyone here. Our colleague at Harvard, Rong Shin, needs a few moments to page through the many screens of Zoom tiles and screenshot each of them. He's written some fancy AI-based software that will then stitch all of our tiles together in what looks like one massive Zoom gallery. We'll post that on Puzzle Day's website later today. If you'd like to vary things, feel free to change hands, make a funny face. Who knows? When you'll be screenshotted, odds are it won't be at the most flattering moment, but we'll do our best. All right, and we are all set here now as well. So CS50X Puzzle Day is especially meaningful for us here in that it really reflects just how international CS50 is. In fact, one of the most gratifying things about teaching this class online and on campus is just how many students and teachers and friends and families are able to connect all around the world. And indeed, if we look at this year's registrations, we had 12,000 plus people from around the world register for CS50X Puzzle Day this year. Uh, topping the list were our students and family and friends in India, United States, Iran, Canada, the UK, Singapore, Nigeria, Brazil, Egypt, Pakistan, and most every other country uh, is on this list. Um, now, being an international course too, I should note that CS50 also receives quite a few notes, sees so many photos of students around the world, um, particularly in challenging times. We've gotten to know all too well students of ours in Nicaragua, Syria, and most recently Ukraine. And I think it's worth noting, too, that the past several days of Puzzle Day have been all the more significant in our minds because for the past two to three years, atop this list in number two and number three has been all of our family, friends, and students in Ukraine who are not even on the list this year, which I think makes all too real what's been going on there and, of course, elsewhere in the world. Um, just wanted to keep them and so many of our students around the world in mind. There's no good segue from something like that to what are ultimately puzzles, but that's indeed why we're all here today. And ultimately, the goal is to celebrate uh, some of the fun, some of the challenge, some of the frustration that you felt. At the end of the day, whether you got zero or one or all of the puzzles right or anything in between, really the goal was just to have fun and get better at problem solving. The world, I dare say, has all too many problems, big and small. And so just getting better at problem solving certainly benefits all of us in some way. So allow me to turn things over now to my colleague here, Carter, and our friends at Meta, many thanks to whom wrote this year's puzzles. Hello, everyone. It is so good to see you all. How are you all doing? Give me a wave if you can hear me. Amazing. Great to see you all here. We thought we'd start off just with some information, what we all thought of this year's puzzles. So we'll kick off with our favorite puzzles here. You might see towards this right-hand side that puzzle number seven, Puzzling Pyrotechnics, which is one of our most liked puzzles. Give me maybe a thumbs up if you chose that one there. Close second was number six here, our portholes puzzle as well. And maybe you had a different take on this. That's also OK, too. Maybe you're down here, puzzle number five is being your favorite one here. Moving on, though, to our hardest puzzles, number five clearly took the cake here, number five being our maps puzzle with the itineraries going on there. And a close second, I believe, was our Harry Potter and the off by one error puzzle number one. 
and some even mix across number three, and finally our meta puzzle here. Now the meta puzzle itself was kind of a new addition here. You had to solve all the previous puzzles to go ahead and get that one. That's why it's kind of high to the top here. Now thinking about our easiest puzzles, noting that easiest doesn't always mean easy. Uh, number four was by far our clearly maybe the easiest one that you all thought. So number four was again our well didn't quite really quite have a title, did it? It was number four and some cryptic characters down below. So we'll jump in right ahead to our first puzzle here. Give me a moment to reset while we go ahead and start the walkthrough for this one. And our first puzzle of this year was Harry Potter and the off by one error. In this puzzle, you had to look at some quotes from Harry Potter characters and figure out, well, what are you supposed to do with them and where do they lead you to? Here are some stats on who got this answer correct, who maybe got it incorrect. How many people tried this problem? So over a thousand people tried this problem. About 400 to 500 guessed an answer, but didn't quite get what we were expecting you to. And maybe 700 to 800 got the correct answer in this case, the blue and the red being correct and incorrect respectively. So let's go ahead and jump into the walkthrough for this one. Turn over to Zach, our friend at Meta, to lead us through this one. Thanks, Carter. Uh, let's make sure, can you all hear me and see the slides? Great, I'm gonna go ahead anyway. Um, so, for this one, you were given a series of illustrations and increasingly verbose Harry Potter quotes, uh, as the title indicated. Um, however, each quote was off by one word, specifically one word had one of its letters replaced. Uh, taking the new letters in the order of the quotes given spelled out the answer to this puzzle, chatter. Um, so for example, the first quote was, there is no need to call me sir, processor, uh, using the word processor instead of professor, um, so you would pull out the letter C. Uh, back to you, Carter. All right. And we'll just reset here for our second puzzle walkthrough. So our second puzzle of this year was if at first you don't succeed. And for this one, you might have seen some images all arranged together, some motivational posters here, but with some numbers underneath them. And that was kind of the clue to the puzzle here. Again, here are some stats on the submissions we received, so over 1,300 people tried this problem with about 700 submitting an answer that wasn't quite what we were looking for, 560 submitting an answer that was actually what we were looking for here. So again, we'll go back to Zach, who can lead us in a brief walkthrough of this problem. Sure. Uh, thanks, Carter. Uh, so using the enumerations given on each of the motivational posters, um, you were supposed to identify the images, uh, each of which had this fun ABAB pattern as its last four letters. So uh, the same pair of letters repeated. Um, so you get Lady Gaga, Intertoto, uh, New Perlala, uh, et cetera. Um, and the title uh, first and flavor text hinted that we cared about the first letter of each image. Uh, that gives us the clue phrase line to a Brit five, indicating we're looking for a five letter answer um, for something that a Brit might call a line. Uh, that word is another word with this ABAB pattern, Q. Back to you, Carter. Nice, so if you're among those who guessed Q or Q-U-E-U-E, -U -E, you are among those who were in the correct portion of this last slide here. Move on just a second to our third puzzle walkthrough. So our third puzzle of this year was input output. And for this one, you were given a variety of kind of crossword clues to figure out and maybe get some more information from those clues themselves. Here again are some stats on people who attempted the problem here. So over a thousand people attempted this problem. And this one we saw maybe only 200 or so were moving towards the correct answer answer we expected you to get here. Again, blue is our correct answers and red here is our incorrect answers. So let's turn over to Zach for a brief walkthrough of this one. Thank you, Carter. Uh, so as you said, this was a series of crossword clues. Um, so the first step is to figure out the output for each clue. Um, now, some of these are a little bit under constrained uh, and might have multiple answers, but using a couple that were slightly more specific, um, you should be able to figure out that there is a pattern here. Specifically, uh, each answer has only O's and I's as vowels, and all of them have exactly five vowels in total. 
Uh, so once you know that pattern, you can figure out the full set of outputs here. Um, now, the title of the puzzle, input output, can be abbreviated to IO, um, further hinting those I's and O's. But we need to figure out what to do with those I's and O's. Well, we're working with IO streams, an important element of computing. Uh, and O's look a lot like zeros, I's look like ones. Um, so we can convert to binary, a common encoding used in puzzles. Um, we can then convert those binary strings into their base 10 numerical values, uh, which fall in the range one to 26, indicating that we can treat them as letters. Looking at the letters of the alphabet those correspond to, we get the answer digital. Back to you, Carter. Amazing. So if you were among those who got the digital answer here, you can count yourself among those who got this answer correct. And we'll reset here for our number four puzzle in just a minute. All right. So number four was actually our fourth puzzle of this past year, unsurprisingly. And in number four, you were given this letter addressed to Will from Samantha, in which some of the characters might have been not quite what you expect. And according to you all, it's one of our easiest puzzles of this year, but let's see some stats on this one. Over 1,300 people attempted this one, with 700 getting the answer we expected you to, and 500 submitting an other answer here. So let's go to Zach for the walkthrough on this one. Thank you, Carter. Uh, so there are two entry points into this puzzle. The first is the title, um, which we've actually given here as lost in translation. That is what those characters would decode to um, because it uses some non-traditional symbols for letters. If you read down the first letters of each line of the message, that spells out wingdings. Um, specifically, all of the characters in the title and then uh, interspersed throughout the message in place of punctuation come from the wingdings three font. Uh, so if you find a mapping between those symbols and the English letter equivalents online uh, and take the five characters from the message, you get the answer river. Uh, alternatively, I believe if you copy pasted the content of this puzzle, um, it would in certain editors that did not support wingdings just put in the letters um, and so you could read it that way. Back to you, Carter. Amazing, so nice use of the wingdings font for this one. And if you're among those who guessed river, then you can count yourself among those who got this one correct too. And we'll go on to our fifth puzzle in just a minute. Okay, so maps was our fifth puzzle this year in which you were given a series of maps that had some itineraries on them, some routes between places. And this one, according to you all, was one of our hardest puzzles for this year. Here are the stats on who got this one correct or incorrect. Here we had a thousand people attempt this one, 900 people submitted an answer that wasn't quite what we were looking for, and 165 ended up getting this one correct. So let's move over to Zach, who can walk us through this one. Thank you, Carter. Uh, so as we said, there were a series of itineraries given in images. Um, the first step would be to identify the start and end locations for each trip depicted on the maps, which were given just by their initials. Um, notably, each of them is a city, which consists of a cardinal direction and a four-letter word. Um, so you should have found East Bend, North Lake, West Vale, North Vale, et cetera. Uh, the next step in this puzzle was to notice that maps was written out around the points of the compass. Um, if you followed that pattern and wrote the four-letter words from each city name around the points of the compass as well, uh, and then take the letter at the specified direction in the first half of the city name, uh, you can get one letter out of each of those words. Uh, so for example, if you write bend clockwise around the compass, you get E at the east, uh, lake written clockwise around the compass, and then going to the north, you get L. Um, and if you do this for all of the uh, eight cities in the four itineraries, you get the answer to this puzzle, elevator. Back to you, Carter. Amazing. So if you were among those who guessed elevator for this one, you can count yourselves among those who got it correct. Not to worry if you didn't, though. It's all about actually making sure you try the puzzle and diving into the puzzle itself. So we'll reset here for our portholes puzzle in just a second. So 
So portholes was our sixth puzzle of this year. And portholes gave you a kind of, uh, not quite a cross, but more like a find and searching for letters, a bunch of open letters here. And it kind of relied on you thinking of this portmanteau of portholes and portals. So here we see some stats on who attempted this one. Over a thousand people attempted this one with 550 getting the answer that we thought this puzzle led to. So Zach, would you like to lead us through the walkthrough here? Absolutely, thank you, Carter. Uh, so as we said, there's the portmanteau of portholes and portals. Um, as we can see, the letter grid contains a suspiciously large number of O's considering none of the words we're looking for contain one. Um, in fact, none of those words appear in full in the grid, uh, but you'll have a major breakthrough in this puzzle when you realize that words are allowed to disappear into one porthole and reappear coming out of another one, uh, possibly at a different angle. Um, after doing this, you can find all of the words in the grid. Uh, and when you include the attached portholes, the filled out grid in terms of which letters are used will look like this. This is important because the next step is to look at the letters that aren't used. Uh, those unused letters in the grid spell out the phrase, order lakes by area, then combine pieces of flags, O's at the center. Um, if you haven't yet noticed that all of the words you were asked to find are lakes, uh, you would figure that out now. That might also lead you to the Wikipedia entry for a list of lakes by area. Uh, flags indicates a common type of code seen in puzzles and one that is thematically appropriate considering this puzzle is nautical themed. Um, semaphore. If you take the two pieces of each lake uh, using the O's at the end of each piece as the center um, to overlay, uh, you can generate semaphore letters uh, seeing the semaphore alphabet shown here. Uh, and then if you read off those letters in order of the size of the lake uh, descending, you get the phrase Mercer Islands Lake. Uh, Mercer Island is just outside Seattle in the middle of Lake Washington. And so the answer to our puzzle is Washington. Back to you, Carter. Thank you, Zach. So again, if you guessed Washington for this puzzle, you can catch us among those who got this one correct. And we'll move on just a minute here to our next puzzle of CTX Puzzle Day 2022. Okay, so our seventh puzzle of this year was Puzzling Pyrotechnics, one of a fan favorite according to you all here. For this one, we had over 1,200 people attempt this problem, 600 getting an answer that we thought was correct for this one, and 500 submitting an other answer here. Um, this one requires you to play a bit of a game, so let's turn over to Zach, who can walk us through that game. Uh, and actually, we have James on this call, the author of this puzzle, so I'm gonna hand off to him. Oh, great, can everyone hear me? Great. Uh, so I wrote this puzzle uh, for this year's puzzle day, and I'm happy to share with you all the solution to it. Uh, when solvers opened this puzzle, you would uh, be confronted with a funny story, and it was kind of long, but then in the end, there was a link uh, to a website where you could start uh, playing this text-based uh, card game with a group of your fellow wizards. Uh, each turn, you can either ask for a hint, uh, play a card, or discard a card, uh, similar to the game Hanabi, if you've ever played that uh, with your friends before. Uh, uh, the trick of this game is that you can't see your own cards, so you have to rely on the hints of all of these wacky wizards in order to be able to solve what cards are in your hand and make sure you can play each of the cards in order uh, from one to five uh, for each color. So it's kind of like a self-solitaire where uh, you aren't able to see your own cards. Uh, the objective of this puzzle was mainly to figure out what the hints that the wacky wizards were giving you really meant. Uh, and each of those wizards kind of had different uh, um, personalities, which meant that they gave you different types of hints. Uh, so here's a list of all of, the uh, all of the characters that you were playing with and what kinds of hints they gave. Uh, so Helpful Harry was uh, the simplest type of hint. Uh, he always gave you a number clue on one of your cards. Uh, and one of the cards that he's giving you will always be a playable card. So a card that uh, you are sure you can uh, put down onto the field. Uh, Supportive Samantha does the same thing, except uh, she does it for color clues. Uh, an important thing is that these wizards are trying to help you. And since they're trying to help you, they uh, are always trying to uh, give you clues about playable cards. And once you notice that, that was really helpful in being able to uh, solve this puzzle. Uh, 
Uh, colorblind Corey was an interesting one because he was colorblind when he gave a color clue, instead of giving you the actual color of the card, he'd give you a slightly different color uh, and one that uh, mapped to a different uh, color randomly. So instead of like red, yellow, green, white, uh, he gave you gray, pink, brown, and purple cards. Uh, he was consistent with what he gave you. So if he told you three cards were gray and they all turn out to be red, from now on, you would know that gray cards are now red. So if he told you another set of cards are gray, you would know that those were red uh, from then on. And that was one way, a strategy where you could uh, discern more information from the game. Uh, Detective Dan uh, was a character that was really trying to make sure that you don't discard cards that you really need to keep in the game. So if he really likes a card, it means that you that was the last card in your hand uh, in the deck uh, that uh, you had left. And if you misplayed that card or discarded the card, you wouldn't be able to win the game. Uh, finally, their helpful pet Fred the cow pig would either oink or moo at a bunch of cards. Uh, and if he oinks at the cards, all the cards share the same number. So it was similar to a helpful hairy hint. Uh, and if he uh, mooed at a card, then uh, they would share the same color. And of course, it would be one playable card in any clue that Fred gives. Uh, so yeah, those are the types of characters that we were looking at. Uh, and deciphering what each of these characters did was key to solving this puzzle. Uh, now, there isn't really a guide or a simple way to beat the game, but you once you know that these five characters do uh, actually do what they think and you've deciphered what they do, uh, beating the game becomes a lot easier. Uh, if you're able to uh, complete the game such that you are able to play every one of your cards uh, on the hand and get a full score of 25 points, uh, the characters uh, would then uh, be helpful to you and congratulate you on winning the game and decipher the riddle that you gave them in the beginning of the game uh, to give you the final answer to this puzzle, Braver. Great, uh, I'll throw it back over. Yeah, so many characters and layers to this one and thank you for, uh, to James for designing this one. If you guessed Braver, you're among those who got this one correct. Um, I'm seeing lots of people in the chat saying this, how fun this one was. So hopefully, even if you didn't get it right, you had some fun along the way. So Spelling Bee was our eighth puzzle of this year in which you were to listen to people trying to spell different words, but somewhat strangely, they all spelled the words incorrectly. Now we had over 1,000 people try this one, 500 getting the answer that correspond to this puzzle here. And now we'll turn it back over to Zach, who can walk us through the solution to this one. Thank you, Carter. Uh, so as soon as we decided we wanted to do a magic themed hunt, uh, I knew we had to have a spelling and spells themed puzzle. Um, each of these recordings as indicated by the bell at the end uh, used in most spelling bees is of someone misspelling a word. Um, you may have noticed that we're observing the Duelers and Dictionaries, or D&D, &D, also spelled D-N-D -D -N -D sometimes, uh, spelling bee, hinting that this refers to a different D&D, &D, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and the fifth edition tells us which version of Dungeons and Dragons to use for reference. Uh, it turns out all of these misspellings are words that are spells from Dungeons and Dragons, but with exactly two wrong letters. Uh, so the correct spellings and wrong letters are given here. If you read those incorrect letters in the order they're given, they give you the phrase DND spell levels for index. Uh, if we look up the level in the DND fifth edition of each of these spells and use that level as an index into the original spell to extract a letter, this gives us the final answer, which also sounds like something that could be a spell Dreamweaver. Back to you, Carter. Amazing, thank you, Zach. So if you're among those who guessed Dreamweaver for this puzzle, you can have yourself among those who got this one correct. Now our final puzzle for this year was actually a meta puzzle, meaning it brought together many different solutions from different prior puzzles here. And the title of this one was Memo from Oculus. So let's see who tried this one. We had about 600, 700 people try this one here, and surprisingly, about 59 people getting this one correct. So let's turn it over to Zach here, can walk us through the solution to this one. Sure, thank you. Yes, this was our first time doing a meta puzzle uh, for the CS50X puzzle day. 
Um, so because it's a meta puzzle, it used information and answers from the, specifically the answers from the previous puzzles. Um, so for recap, we have the previous puzzles and their answers here. Um, in the puzzle itself, you were given a set of crossword clues. Uh, each of the crossword clues in the puzzle can be solved to an answer matching the first enumeration written in parentheses. Uh, now, you may notice among these answers, there are some groupings. Uh, in fact, those answers can be sorted into eight different groups corresponding to, as the flavor text, video intro, and theme of the hunt all indicate, tech companies. Um, and so, for example, L, R, and T are all letters of the alphabet, um, alphabet being Google's parent company. The Echo, Prime, and Kindle are all Amazon products, um, and Times, Union, and Kindle are all squares. Uh, we, we also had the answers to our eight feeder puzzles, which also had one fit into each of these tech company categories. Um, so Dreamweaver being an Adobe product, Brayburn being a type of Apple, Washington being a square, et cetera. So once you had associated the feeder puzzle answers with their crossword clue answers, uh, you could then use the second indices given in brackets with those crossword clues to index into the feeder puzzle answers. That gave you uh, the final answer phrase, build them a new data center. Back to you, Carter. So many layers to this one by virtue of there being so many prior puzzles to use and this one's solution. Um, again, the answer is build them a new data center. And we have a shown a follow-up video here that we can play in response to this puzzle here. So I'll turn it over back to this video. Of course, we should build them a new data center. Let's see if they'll trade back the installation wizard in exchange for that. I'll try summoning the spirit now. To me fly, ye scheming apparition. Hear our deal, our winning condition. Yes. Hello. What? What? Voicemail? Really? Yes, I know my summons is very important to you. How are all of your apparitions busy? It's the middle of a work day. Oh, yes, yes, okay. They said they'll send someone over in the next five to 60 minutes. Can you believe that? What is it that you conjurers desire? Answer me quickly or I'll strike you with fire. Oh, that was quick. Wicked spook, we're prepared to offer you a deal. We can tell from your clogged summon centers that you could do with more compute mana. We'd like to build you a data center if you give us our installation wizard back in return. Fair enough, I accept your offer. Where's the stuff? Where's the centaur you proffer? This one's just a prototype, but we've got several stabled ones in our mare house. We'll send somebody over with one right away. Don't make us wait. Otherwise you'll suffer the consequences if you become irate. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you so, so much. Oh, you all did such a wonderful job. Oh, when I was captured, I thought that was going to spell disaster. Man, I thought that wicked ghoul was going to make me give up the ghost. I can't thank you enough. But for now, get back to work. So maybe a round of applause for that acting there. Thank you all for putting together that video for us. So that concludes our walk through of CCX 2022 Puzzle Day. Um, we will certainly follow up later with solutions to these puzzles, some uh, written walkthroughs there. We'll also follow up with statistics that we showed in these slides and we'll also follow up with some reflections and ultimately our winners. It's so wonderful to see you all here. Thank you all for coming and maybe We'll do a wave goodbye. Thank you all again.